Hey everyone, we're back for another episode of Motown Witch After Dark. I'm Yvette. I'm Angie. And we have the giggles. So, anyway. This has been an interesting day. Uh, interesting today. Uh, the day that we're recording this is a Saturday. So, yeah. our Saturdays are kind of um, interesting. So, this has been a very, very interesting day today. So, we're kind of punch <laughs> drunk. Without even touching anything in a bottle. Totally. So, how was your week? Um, good. It was real good. Spent a lot of time with family. Um, just work. One day. So, other than that, everything was really good. Groovy, copacetic, not a lot Busy, though. Very busy. Um, definitely today. It was real busy. Thursday was real busy, too. Yeah. Because I was on the phone and people was good. It's a lot. So, yep. Everything was great. Really? I'm <laughs> the sun. We're moving it all along. This has been a very busy week. It's been very. It's it's gone by very fast. Right. Uh, right. Before I realized that the whole week was gone, there's a lot going on with the store. There's a lot going on with trying to come up with other events to do. There's a lot going on with trying to uh, formulate all the different things that make this happen. And then the witches ball coming up. So and the bazaar and folks contacting me for vendor spaces and right. so it's a juggle i'm juggling every day a whole big juggle thing so at the end of the night i am like hard exhausted hard yep because it's, it's it's a lot i mean even just running a store even just being a reader you deal with so many different people and different energies and different situations and emotions and all of that it becomes um it becomes draining if you don't properly put it in its perspective and okay. cleanse a lot because today a lot of people walked up to that counter crying yes i went through at least a, a box of tissues today it's a lot of tears in here today so the heaviness if we're kind of weird we deserve to be at this point because we gotta let this shit out yeah for <laughs> Seriously, for real, for real. So, yeah, it was a decent week. Then, of course, I didn't hear almost for a whole day because God Smack was very loud. I was supposed to see God Smack and Stain. They were loud. She it talked loud crazy. the whole next day. In a way, I couldn't hear it. She was like, yeah. So, I'm like, oh, yeah. Um, sorry if I'm loud. Yeah, I couldn't hear she has been waiting for a long time for that, so I had to let her have that moment. Okay. September first is coming. Um, I might take off. You mean he's screaming at everybody? He might be the one going with me. Hey. Anyway, this point. Okay. It's, it's, it's <laughs> disturbed. Anyhow, um, we've been talking about different things today or this week, um, and the word manifesting has come through a lot. Angie's a huge manifester. She's taught classes here on manifesting. But um, for lack of a better word, that's been a word. Mm -hmm. But we've been making things happen in our own wish lists, uh, scribing, all these words that people use now yep. to make things come about. And watching things unfold in your favor is kind of sweet. It's kind of sexy. It's kind of hot. It is. Um, especially when <clears throat> when you know there was no other way other than what you did um, when you see the magical um, the magicalness surrounding whatever it is that you're trying to manifest um, actually today thinking back on a few of my readings one of the main things is people walk in a space where they have to manifest their next phase in life and not only me, people in my family, you, it's a general theme for people. It's time to manifest this next, this next phase of our lives mm -hmm. where the things that we've manifest up until this point, now they, they're here. They've been here. That stuff is taking place. We've kind of rolled that out for a minute. So now it's time to manifest what the next part of our lives is going to be. Um, because most of the people they were, their cards showed that they were in a transformation 
or and going into a new phase. So I don't think that it's necessarily um, an age thing or something along those lines. I think this is a global phase. Mm-hmm. that we're all walking into is like okay so what's this next part going to be for you and what do you want to, to do how do you want it to be so for me I've, I've, I'm starting to get to my, my I'm in my thought pattern of it before I sit down and I write out what I need to write out my structured letter to the universe saying hey I want this this way before I get to writing things out because essentially all of my other stuff I got that. Hmm. I got that. I wrote it out. And now I'm at another space. And what I have to do is make sure it's bigger, not only to me, but bigger towards the universe. Because one of the things that even me doing a reading on myself, and I actually have gotten confirmation from other people, is that this next one has got to be bigger than what I, but of what I'm seeing or what I want right now. So I to think I know what my mind is and they say nope bigger so it's like hmm, whoa one of those kind of things so <coughs> everybody hmm. need to be in this space of where do you want the next phase of your life to go I agree I agree I know for myself I tend to change directions every so many years I end up in a whole nother hmm mindset for lack of a better term Mm -hmm. um be it career wise home wise uh personal status wise Mm -hmm. all these out over the years since i was since i've been an adult every few years so if i if i don't talk to you for five years when i talk to you again you're like well damn you're doing this stuff What, what happened to blah blah so that's always been my way so i think of that a lot when i sit here Cause at this point, the only thing that's missing in my life is my travel that I'm used to doing. I'm used right. to traveling. I've not been able to do that uh, while the store has been building and growing. Now it's time to get the proper help in place so that I can do that part. That's the one thing I do know. And then that, for you, that's even a manifestation yes. of manifesting the proper people at the proper times that will be able to keep things afloat and keep you at peace. Yes. That's, and to me, the biggest part of that manifestation is that you are at peace with it. Because if your peace is not disturbed, your ass ain't going nowhere. Exactly. So, yeah. Exactly. No. That's the biggest part. <laughs> yeah. Because ultimately, and I've said it tons of times, you, you need a rest. You need a break away. Mm-hmm. You, and it needs to be a break away that you don't have to think about anything else. You don't have to think about the fact that your store is not making money, but you also don't need to worry about it if the store is still going. Right. So that has to be a very detailed thing. And that's one one of the biggest things that I always tell people when it comes down to manifest, manifesting. You've got to be very, very detailed. Mm-hmm. you got to be detailed, but you've also got to leave room enough for the universe to do what it wants to do as well. True. So... True. That's why I, I think I, I told you the story of my second husband. I kind of manifested that whole thing. And then when it, after, well, we were together for like nine years, but when it ended, I wasn't angry. Mm-hmm. And my friends are mad at me for not being angry because I asked for the man that, 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 took, oh, that took control. I asked for the man to handle the bills. I asked for the man to do all these things. I did not ask for a good husband. So... His philandering in the street was the byproduct. In his mind, I had the the, 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 the the fancy clothes, the fancy jewelry, the fancy house, all the tr- all the all the trimmings, and I should have been happy with that. So at the end, when I looked at it, this is before I even knew all any about all this kind of shit. But I looked at it and I was like, well, I wasn't specific enough because I didn't mm-hmm. ask for the loyal husband. I asked for the husband to handle all the shit. I didn't ask for the loyal part. Right. So, and I wasn't mad. <laughs> My friends were like, fuck that, go bust window. I'm like, yeah, I'm good. I'm just moving on along. Okay. All of them Jasmine Sullivan's need to sit down. Yeah, but I just, but in, that's not necessary. It wasn't necessary. He ended up miserable in the end anyway. But, you know. But, yeah. It's, it's, 
being specific, especially about certain things. And even when I tell men and or women when they are trying to manifest a mate, be as freaking specific as possible. You'll get give or take about 90% and then that 10% you need to pay attention to see okay is this a uh, uh, a thing that's that you can deal with you is know it what I'm a saying? deal breaker or not? right is it a deal breaker or is it not if it's not then let's roll if it is mm, we got to go back to the, the drawing board let's try to find something else so you know but um i'm, I'm in a space where i it's time for me to manifest some different stuff that I haven't manifested before. Some stuff is the same, but mostly it's different things. And for me, after manifesting things that I wanted in things quickly and all of that, it's just a matter of me doing it. So I'm about to get out of the thinking process of what what it is that I want and kind of go back into the vein of <clears throat> how it was in the beginning where when I first started manifesting, um, I was I learned it and I really started it, what they would call manifesting, uh, with the secret. And I remember somebody on there saying, it's like being able to go into a mall and get whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Because I have to go bigger than what my mind set says, I have to go back into that original mindset of if you could walk into a mall and they have all of these pictures of houses and you can just without mm -hmm. what would you get it will probably be bigger than what my conscious mind would think of you know what i'm saying uh, my conscious mind mind you I, I all my children are adults they have kids of their own so i would still probably remain a certain kind of way but in my conscious mind but in my manifesting mind oh, I'm going for the gusto so I've got to go back into that mindset and say hey this is what I want try to manifest some of the stuff that I started with in the beginning like houses on Lakeshore Drive out in Gross Point Shores that's where my initial manifesting started from that hmm. then I stopped it pull it back and say okay but what am I what can I feasibly start with here to work up to so now I got to go back to that thought okay. thought pattern and say huh okay so you did this so I know you can do that almost like challenge let me challenge the universe let's get it what you want to do now you said this let's figure out how you gonna do this because it's not up to me I'm just gonna say this is what I want I'm about to cut cut it off and keep it moving right it'll show up that so ding ding bitch <laughs> <laughs> I can see that 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 yeah I can come visit Lake Shore Drive yeah yeah absolutely Lake Shore Drive dollar or I said one of them big huge houses in the middle of Detroit I can mm -hmm. do that too yeah, I prefer I, to open up or wake up in the morning and sit up in my bed and look out my window to water at the up. water definitely even if it's frozen water. That's, that's my thing, looking at the water. Wow. Yeah, it, it's been a lot of that. A lot of I've been talking to a lot of the customers and listening to people and trying to get the women to understand that they get to create their reality. So I've been talking to so many um, young people that felt that they were stuck in their situation, uh, particularly women who were in relationships with men Although even if the men did not live with them, they still felt stuck, felt like this man was still uh, attached to them some kind of way and all these things. And it's difficult for me to have those conversations many times because, you know, I don't do that stuck thing. So, but in trying to, to get them to understand their own mindset mm -hmm. and, how, and how they get to choose to break away. Exactly. <clears throat> I, I've had I've had a couple conversations this week where I had to ask women specifically why do you feel that you should not leave? Seeing what the circumstances is, what is telling you that you need to stay? Mm. And be honest with you. If you still let it, you still want to be there. Just say that. 
Because there's no right or no wrong to it. Mm -hmm. Just be honest with you. Tell me, guess what? I just want to vent. I ain't going nowhere. It's messed up. He did something messed up. But I'm still going to be here. I just need to vent and get this thing off of me. Yeah. And guess what? I'll listen all day and won't tell you anything. And then be like, are you okay? I but if you saying, okay, this, this is where I want to be. And you got this man and you know he can't contribute to that. I always ask him, what's your, what's your end goal? Because the end goal in a relationship should not be married. So many people say, but I want to be, I, I, I want to be married to him. That's it. But if they're already a fuck tired, being married to him doesn't that make them less of a fuck tired. I know that, and that goes both ways. And I've had that conversations with with males and females, and it's like, but if it's not working now, how do you feel that this piece of paper and this ring is gonna make it legitimate, make it better, make it different? It's not. They're still that same person. Oops. Them same flaws. Them flaws don't leave once you get married. Far from it. They they actually um, exacerbate and they get bigger. And they become more to the front, forefront. Like, don't I know. All of that stuff. Oh, you think it was cute. Girl, that's so cute. How aggressive he is. And then you talk about he snatched your ponytail out. Oh, oh. it was cute before you get married. But going back, these be very, very specific on what you want. Mm -hmm. When you say aggressive, you better know what you're saying. Because guess what? The, the, the universe don't have time to decipher. Well, she said aggressive, but she might have been in the bedroom. No, I'm about to give you an aggressive man. I Watch your thoughts. Watch what come out your mouth. That's definitely you got to say, guess what? Aggressive in this way passive in that way and it's like you having to sit down and tailor make a person you might get a nice amount of that the part that you don't get is it something that you can you can live with then let's let's roll but your end goal when you trying to manifest a relationship should not be marriage right because once you get married is that the end of it the universe gonna walk and i'm you know you got what you want But is you going to manifest what that 50th anniversary going to look like? That's that's bigger a bigger end goal than your marriage. And that would be my friend. The one that's, that, that called and scared me because she would have mm -hmm. her 10th anniversary. <clears throat> so she sent me another message. Now, so not only is it 10th anniversary, they're renewing their vows at the party. Yeah. But... As long as I know her, that's been her thing. She wanted to be married. And she wasted all her time on this other dude that was an idiot to me. She was head over heels over his fool. I saw the plays that he was doing on her. She didn't see it. She kept going, what do you mean? And I'm like, mm. So that didn't work out. This guy, since they've been together, they've been on the same path, on the same road. They're both church people, and they both have these goals. And, other, and they, they've had... <clears throat> She just turned 60. So I think he's 60 or maybe a year or two older than her. At this late age, so they've been married so they got married at 50. Um, they bought their first house together. They called it their forever home. They put the pictures, look at this, we got our forever home. And they're doing they're all these building. things. They're, and, but they're, they're on the same, they're in the same fucking book on the same page. Finding that is huge. And she, Pretty much, she was so focused on that that she did bring it about. Exactly. She got it. She got it. So when she sent me the next note saying that they were renewing their vows at the at the at the party as well, I'm like, oh, okay, I'm gonna send something there because we'll be at a concert. <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna send I'm gonna send them a gift. I'm gonna have them deliver. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, it is. It's got you gotta. Like, I, I would say this, going into this space of having to manifest the next phase of, uh, of your life, you got to go past that thing. Instead of you saying, let's say, for instance, somebody say, I want to manifest a car. Say you want to manifest a paid off car. Okay. 
If you say you want to manifest a house, mm -hmm. I want to manifest a paid off house that my grandkids can inherit. That means not only are you going to manifest that house, you're going to manifest that it's paid off, that also you're going to be there long enough for your grandkids to inherit it. We've been manifesting the thing, but not the longevity of the thing. Mm -hmm. I want, oh, I, I, want to, I want to manifest being in a good relationship. Well, is that it? Right. Do you want to grow old with this motherfucker? But this person, do you want to have grandkids with this person? Do you want to have a good, stable long lasting loyal relationship mm -hmm. those are the intricacies that need to be in there instead of saying oh, I'm just going to manifest me a good man well shit you walk past three of them at, this, at your job right? but you don't say hey that actually wants me for me that, I, that takes care of me that will accept my like you got to get in there and you got to put some longevity on it Absolutely, positively, for real, specific, and that it lasts. That's because that you specificity. getting it. You can get it. Yeah, got to be specific. Yep. That's the but we. Oh, I want this. Oh, I want to be married. I want a baby. That's what you get. Yeah, you married and he don't like you and you got a kid. Oh, go figure. Man, but what else did you say? So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, I think it's that season for, th for people to focus. Because at this point, whatever the hell the world is going through, we need to be making our shit happen for us now. Because this, this, this stuff is absolutely insane that's going on out here in these streets right now. For real. One of the things, and this has been popping back up in my mind from back when I was um, heavy off in the church and I was in ministry and leadership and stuff. They kept talking about that a time was going to come where it was a transference of wealth from the wealthy to the poor, so to speak. That has been popping back up in my mind a lot because I've been seeing a lot of stuff. Me being on TikTok and a lot of the social medias, I'm starting to see a lot of influencers telling people how to clean their credit up and do this. How to come across how you can make money this way. How, and a lot of stuff is the tricks that a lot of the rich have been doing for years. Mm -hmm. But we were never privy to that information. And I'm like, could this be the transference of wealth that they've talked about? Because I've seen some influencers that I could, I promise you two years ago, just remembering where they were, what apartment they was in, how their life was, the things that they were talking about, and then you see them now. Mm -hmm. And it's like, and they, and some of them will tell you, well, I did this and I do th did this and I moved this way and I, and I'm like, hmm. But that's been heavy on me, and I really need to kind of sit and meditate and manifest, trying to find out not only the answer to this, but how to the answer, how to apply it, and how to be able to teach it. That's what I mean about manifesting the whole thing, the whole gamut of it. Because I can manifest that I get it, but I need to manifest how to get it, how to keep it, and then how to teach it. Okay. So... That's been another another part of the things that I need to manifest because that's just been playing. And I mean, when I say playing in my head, it's been a daily thing. I hear it at least once a day mm -hmm. about the transference of wealth from the wealthy to, to, to the poor. And I'm like, hmm. And it's always been in my head, but it's been a lot more lately. I will say a lot more within the last, maybe this year, since the beginning of the year. I'm like, what is this? And I'm gonna tell a person, I'm gonna sit with it for a minute. You know what I'm saying? Is this just something that I've heard in the past that's just coming up? But when it keeps coming up and it keeps resounding, it keeps coming and coming and coming, now I need to find out what it is. So I've been doing a little bit more research. But like I said, for me, it's not a matter of just having it happen to me. Because some people just want to manifest it for them. Mm -hmm. Not only do I want it to manifest for me, I need to do it, see the longevity of it, and then still be able to teach other people to be able to go back and do it. Okay. So most of the, my manifestations is not always just for me. Mm -hmm. So 
Yeah, but that's one of the things. A couple, or it's a few different things that I'm trying to manifest, but that's one of the things. Like, what is this wealth transference that needs to go? go? Because we're seeing the entertainment industry basically fall in, in front of our eyes. Cause I seen um what's his name Billy Porter. Come on, you gotta sell his house. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. A lot of these shows they not they haven't started their new seasons. They haven't even started recording them. Let alone come September when the new seasons start. What are they gonna do? We're not gonna have no new seasons. They don't get it settled. So you know, it, a lot of people they talked about it a lot in the beginning, but they ain't really talking about it too much now. Nah, but that it ain't went nowhere. a lot of transference that can go it's just a matter of doing it and I can see the transference in that in at that realm because now a lot of independent movie makers is able to make theirs because mm -hmm. they're not under SAG or they're not a part of the big name productions so a few of my clients and stuff I'm seeing them Tubi is banging at this point because everybody yeah. is making their movies and they going straight to Tubi. I didn't know my one customer. Mm -hmm. yeah, he, he put out another one. And I was oh, watching he put another one? Yeah. Second? He promised me I, I, that I could watch this one and it wasn't going to make my nerves bad. No. I watched the first 15 minutes I was done. Okay. <laughs> like, yeah, you going to be there, man. Um, yeah. I mean, but it got it got a lot of... I can just... I can specifically speak of Detroit movie makers. And that's the one I'm back talking about to now. back. Back. We got one coming out. I freaking yes. Today. Don't ask me the date. I don't remember the date. Yvette's in the movie. I have a small part okay. in the movie. They gonna make me look it up. I have a small part in the movie playing myself, basically. But it's, but he gave me a name. My character has a name. I don't remember that either. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of us that is moving into other areas. That's right. She got Curve Show with Tammy, uh, Caught in the Act, Unfaithful. Mm -hmm. That comes on Tuesdays on MTV. So. It oh. is September 16th. And it's called What Lies Within. What Lies Within. It's a metaphysical type movie done by people of color going to be at the Northwest Activity Center on September 16th. They're selling tickets now. How do you forget to talk? I'm supposed to live. Oh, I don't think about this kind of stuff. I don't know. I had fun doing this movie though. It was fun. I got to be me. He said he wrote it for me. Uh, what? You being you? Yes. Yeah, but and that goes back to people are moving into areas that they're no they they're not that's not their um their normal yeah their normal thing yeah because Stanley Stanley Nunn who's this is his movie he's already working on his an, another one I don't know what it's about we uh, told him he's already working on another one I have I got a friend he we actually sit down at times and we go over ideas. He's asked me a couple times about, about a movie. I would I yeah do it. I would. There's something else to say. My grandbaby is like, like, oh, Grammy. Yeah, do it. Why not? And then somebody, <laughs> when they get their money right, then they see if I come show up. That event, Wyatt lady. <laughs> they can put us both in a movie together. That shit. <laughs> And this right, we can call it our own movie. We can we need no. the Life and Times at the Motown Witch, our own freaking reality show. Seriously, because the stuff that happens here, I cannot make up in a million years. For real, that ass for real. This could be its own reality show. For real. <laughs> That's not a lie. The people who come in here swearing that they're being followed by people with tinted windows. Yeah, you know she went there too today, the lady did. But yeah, yeah. That's when I walked. So I, yeah, I have a couple I that a, a couple of regulars that they, they come in here, they swear that the people are in the parking lot watching them and all this that and the other and everybody's always doing something to them and there's the people that bury things around their house. And yeah. So 
It's a very, very interesting character. Yeah, there's some very interesting people that come in through here. Yeah. And the crazy thing is, it, it, sometimes it either happens on the day I'm not here or I am extremely busy. And I'll come out and be like, girl, you just missed. I'm like, wait a minute. But, hey, sometimes it ain't meant for me to see. But sometimes some people just need to vent. The best one is that guy. That guy who moved away and now he's so much better. There was a guy who showed up one day and whatever he was going through with the woman that he had been seeing, she did something that had him almost homicidal. And I had never met this man before. He walked in here and he was vibrant. You could feel the anger coming off him. And he was standing here and he's like, I just need something. I don't know what I need. And he was so angry you can feel it and I just looked at him and I said sweetheart you need a beer <laughs> and I went back in the refrigerator and got him a beer and he pounded the beer he drank the beer down and he looked at me and he said thank you you probably just cut me out of jail wow and we talked and the other reader was here and we all, st we all stood around here out here. We talked for like 20, 30 minutes. By the time he left, he felt a whole lot better. He came back a couple days later and bought me a, because uh, he asked me what did I drink. So he came back a few days later, bought me a pint of Jack Daniels. I was like, this is for you helping me the other day. He bought some stuff. He bought some incense, you know, some little incidentals. And then he went and left Detroit, got a different job somewhere in the South. And one day came in here because his daughter is still here. Totally different dude. Wow. Totally different dude. He's I'm actually a handsome guy. Because, I mean, I was so looking at him like, oh, my goodness, trying to keep, you know. And I'm looking at him. He came back in. He's all cleaned up, shaved, hairline done, and clothes. And I went, oh, my God, you like a whole other person. Wow. And you just offered him a beer. I like that. Because he, there's nothing else I can say to him. He was too angry. Damn. Everything don't have to be super deep. And he just needed somebody to listen to him. And, and a lot of times that's kind of really what it is. You know what I'm saying? And to let, and sometimes just to let people know that you're not crazy. Mm -hmm. I've had a bunch. You just don't understand. I see things. And I'm like, yeah. No, like I see things. Yeah. yeah. Come to the women meeting. Tell them that. See what they did. And be like, yeah, and you're just getting there. Like, and sometimes that some people just need to know that I'm not crazy. Yeah. But I don't know what that lady's doing to him. He was about to kill somebody. I, I never even asked him. I didn't even want him to go into the story. Mm. I needed him to calm down. Because he was one of the ones that, like, he would just kill up everybody in his sight, period. So it was like, okay, mm. you, just need to, you just need to take this down a few, a few notches. But... Yeah, there, there's there's several people who, like today, it's just the heavy energy just walking in in tears, walking in in tears. It's like, okay, is there anything I can help you with? And they just turn and look, and the tears start flowing. Yeah. So there's a lot of heavy energy out here as it is. Yeah. And a lot of people, they're in that space where it's almost, like I said, they have to manifest the next phase. But guess what? In order, if you're going to the next phase, that means you're ending a phase, and they don't know where to go. They feel stuck. I'm just here. I don't know. All my kids is leaving to go off to college. But well, any and of the don't have to be sad. Exactly. And, but they don't know what to do. Right. Like I had a lady today and I had to tell her, I'm like, you're moving into a space of you. You've been a mom for this many years. So now it's you. So now you've got to learn you. You got to go back and find out what stuff you like. You done been eating chicken nuggets and all this other shit because you done had these kids. And you know what I'm saying? You've been ripping and running. You got to go to this event and do this and that. All of that time is now free. So now you got time to find out who you are. What do you really like? We Not only do we change a lot for our, our marriages and our relationships, we change a lot for our kids. Most definitely. Some stuff, you might be a horror fan fanatic, but you had to put that on the back burner to watch Barney for years. And guess what? After they got out of Barney, you didn't go back and pick up your horror movie thing that you really, really love. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I'm saying? You got to get back to you. 
So I had to tell all the people, guess what? You're in, ushering into another phase. What do you want it to look like? So it's time to think, what do I like? Do you like going to sit by the water? Do you want to travel? Do you, a lot of people is about to start doing a lot of traveling. Um, do you want to go here? Like, what do you want to do? And they sitting there, you could you could see the wheels turning. See, because they hadn't even thought about that. I'm like, do you even want to live here? There's no need for you to be here now. Your kids in level one off to college. You don't have to be here. Absolutely. And they just sitting there like, I never thought about that. Yeah, it's time to script out and move forward into what it is that you want to do and where you need to be. So, I think everybody needs to try to figure out what this next area in their life. Most definitely. Because there's a lot of stuff popping and there's a lot of stuff we can do. Most definitely. Because it's definitely time to get some more stamps on my passport. Ooh, child. I got to give me a whole another one. Mine expired. When they expired, because I had one prior to me having kids. And once I got married, kids, they gone now. See? So, they're adults now. I don't have to look for a babysitter or none of that. So, I just need to go ahead and give me another one. Get another one. But what I did do. Before that last one was getting ready to go off to college, I did get me one of them enhanced driver's license. So, so the enhanced cool. one, I think, is what? Canada and Mexico. I think it's and Mexico. The Caribbean as well. The Caribbean? Mm -hmm. okay. So it gave me a little bit more wiggle room. But some places I want to go. Some stuff I need to go. Let's go. So that's going to be on my listing. Absolutely not. The warm Caribbean waters where it feels she, like you're walking wherever the there's sun. Time. I don't care where the fuck the sun is. I don't care. We got to take her to Bella. We taking her with some fucking sun. Bella don't have enough sun. You look something. I get the sun in the magnifying glass. It's going to take me a while. They pick up my legs, but anyways. It's going to take me a while. I'm going to get the big I one. I haven't been anywhere warm enough. To one leg at a time. They just jealous. They just <laughs> jealous that my son, my legs glow in the dark. She's special. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to somebody today, and I was like, "You should go to Myrtle Beach." Tell me something, somebody that. I was like, oh, come on. They were saying they want to go beach. Go to Myrtle Beach. Go. Like everybody think you gotta go to Miami. Yeah. Go somewhere else. It's a bunch of beaches. It's a bunch of beaches. First thing they think of, everybody want to go to Miami. Ooh, it's wretched down there. I ain't care Miami either way though. Go somewhere. That water is a little salty in Myrtle Beach though, but well, it's gonna be salty in the ocean. Uh, it, it it was so salty, it burnt my face. Literally, it burnt my face. I was like, dang, I was mad. But yeah. Hmm. Yeah, so that's that, I think. <laughs> so manifestation didn't take that long to talk about. Because honestly, it's really just that cut and dry. It's really that just that simple. Um, we, we make it seem very hard, but the actual only part that's kind, I don't even want to say it's hard, it's just hard for some people to do, is once you put out in the universe whatever it is, however you do it, whether you do the two cup method, whether you do um, grab a void codes, that's something, that's another one that I, I've been doing, but I don't, I don't typically talk a lot about um, it's certain codes that um, attract certain things, like it can attract money, different stuff. Um, whether it's that, whether it's scripting, whether it's vision boards, anything that you try to manifest, once you put your petition out to the universe, is the disconnection. That's where people have issues. Mm -hmm. Because we think that we got to keep putting that energy into it. When you keep putting energy into it, you then tell the universe, I don't trust that you're going to do it. You just do it. Now, I'm not talking about if you do the 369 thing. But once you do the 369 one, once you hit your nine, disconnect from it. And you just wait for the universe to do it. Whether I don't have a clue to 369. It's, it's a method where you write it three times in the morning, six times in the, in the afternoon, and then nine times before you go to sleep. 
whatever it is that you want to manifest, mm. right? And sometimes they say you can do it for three, six, or nine days. Sometimes they'll tell you to do it for 30 days, 21 days. It could be for different range of days. But however it goes, you once you finish those days, you still come back to the same thing. You've got to disconnect from that. That's hard because it's like, okay, I just put this petition out. So now you want to sit here and just wait for it. Disconnect. Oh, okay. The quicker you disconnect and you almost forget about it, you may look up and it may be two days later and you're like, oh, there you go. It may be a month. It's that having faith part. Exactly. And it's funny that you could talk to people and they can have faith in the things that they learn in Christianity, but when it doesn't transfer over to spirituality. Because you had faith that it was a man who was supposed to come back in a cloud to get you. You had faith. You believed beyond a shadow of a doubt that that was going to happen. You even, you even told other people this was going to happen. But you won't tell other people that I'm about to manifest this million dollar business. You won't tell nobody that. With a surety that you told the other person that Jesus is coming back to get you. That interesting. But you trust something that you can't see, but you can't trust you and your belief. Because then you can't blame anybody else. And that's and that's another thing. We can try to manifest something, and when it don't happen, we automatically like, well, see that stuff don't work. Sometimes the universe will keep us from killing us. The universe be like, if I give you a million dollars, you will be a dope fiend and be out here on these streets tricking. Well, I ain't gonna give it to you. <clears throat> yeah. And you like, oh, see, this stuff don't work. No, the universe has saved your life. Everybody not meant to be a millionaire. Everybody is not meant to, to have their own business. Everybody is not meant to have fast cars and all of these women and all of this stuff that people want to manifest. You might just be on this earth to manifest that your kids don't go through the same cycles as you. But you know, like, who was it? It was somebody that came in here earlier today and I was trying to get her to understand that she kept using the word try. And I'm like, can you stop saying try? Say what you're going to do. But then I'm going to try. Yeah, okay, I'm trying. I said, no, I'm not trying. You either do or you don't. Stop looking for trying. So she got ready to say it again and she caught herself. She said, see, I caught it. <laughs> she, and she was happy. She caught it. But guess what? Now when she goes home and she says, it's going to catch. She's going to keep doing that. I'm like, okay, I got to do better. Yeah. We got to do better even in our in our vocabulary. I mean, it's just certain words. When I do my, my manifestation classes, I talk about the words that you don't need to say, the words that shouldn't be in your in your vocabulary. Stuff like hope and try. Like, all of those are words that you should not be saying when you're trying to manifest something. Exactly. So. Exactly. And I probably will revisit my manifestation class. It's just going to be other things added this time. We're going to do another one. Yeah. Word. But yeah, that, I mean seriously, <laughs> that that that's that that's that whole thing. But I know, it, like like you said though, it, it's that believing in yourself. You have to believe in yourself, and you have to know, basically, for lack of a better way to say it, that the God is in you, and you have that you have that in you. It's you. The crazy part is, <laughs> Mary Mary made a song called "It's the God in Me." They they made the song. It was talking about. It. And everybody sung that song, but nobody really got the meaning behind it. Just listen to the beat. No, no, they, they, they was sing. They got what it said, but they didn't realize that if we're made in God's image, that means that we are guys and we have the ability to create. Hmm. Like nobody goes down that road. I don't know. It sounds. It, it, it sounds good to say. Oh, you know, God is in you. See, God is in me. Well, create what it is that you need. Stop asking for it. Child. I was I was having a conversation before we started the podcast with somebody, and I was talking about the whole 
Christianity versus uh, spirituality thing, and that might be something else I got to revisit as well. So. Oh, the class that was supposed to happen? Okay. The fuck? Was that was Wait, yeah. Wait, that was supposed to happen with somebody else? So you just going to put me on blast like that? No, oh. I'm asking. <laughs> And the class is supposed to happen? No, Woo! not like that. Oh, yes, it was. <laughs> yes, the class I was supposed my, to happen. I'm having a brain fart. It's like, no, it didn't happen. If it was supposed to happen with that other... Okay. Shut yes. up. See, I get picked on uh, in my face. She put me on bliss. No, I did not. It was a Oh, the class I was supposed to happen? It was a question. In my arm was like, it's crazy. Mm, yeah, yeah. Change the subject. Anyway, no. <laughs> But yes, yes, the class that it was it was a class that we was I was supposed to do. Yes. Because you weren't supposed to do it by yourself, so that's why I'm asking the question. Yeah. But I mean it could be done. Either way I go, it could be done. Okay. So Okay. Katie. Those are subjects in ways. Her looking at me in that tone of voice. So yeah, y'all, we got some stuff coming up, obviously. <laughs> well, we got, you know, we got the fall. We get to, I think, I think with each change in season, we get to come up with something different. Right. Right. Because there's other stuff to uh, stuff to look at. And even with that, since people tend to go with the Gregorian calendar and look at the new year coming, to end the year with that kind of series of stuff going on and learning mm-hmm. that kind of thing, you can help them with that new year resolution bullshit. Mm-hmm. I think all of that will probably take place uh, around or just after, starting just after the uh, witch's ball. So. Sounds like a plan, Stan. Mm-hmm. So, you gonna do that thing? Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but yeah. So, as far as with manifesting, hey y'all, uh, the word is go big. Go bigger than what your mind is saying. If your mind is saying a three bedroom house, go five. Why not? Who said you can't get it? That part. That part. But also, go further with it house that your grandkids can inherit that your great kids great grandkids can play in that means you're going to have that house that long that you get your shit together and put it in trust and leave it to your descendants that part (laughs) that part there won't be an inheritance tax that's a whole nother thing (laughs) and we gotta get somebody in here to teach that yeah i'm looking for somebody that's uh yeah definitely that that is something to put out there so with so many young ladies and young people not just young ladies so many people coming through here um that's starting businesses that need leadership in how to set up the business how to set up the llc or the s corp or the um shoot their articles of incorporation their 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 business plans uh their grants to get grants for these things all these things are out there but we don't network as a people well enough to, 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 to get these things to happen. So I would love to be able to have some kind of circle slash workshoppy type thing where uh, people can learn how to do these things. Um, I've had a couple young people come through who were, re- who were realtors. Um, which even helps with that whole manifestation of the housing situation Mm. Um, to to work in in those areas. One one lady that I know that I follow on Instagram, that's a realtor, she did a workshop on one particular Saturday and I sent her a note telling her I can't come during those hours. It was like the middle of the day on a Saturday. And I'm like, my Saturdays are busy at my store and I can't leave on those days. I said, so if you do one in the evening or if you want to do another one, I have a space for you. So let me know. Right. Yeah, I think that um, even people who may have any of those resources that you've discussed 
or know of somebody who have those resources or would like to be part of a networking event where we can kind of network what we have and, and, and how it can benefit other business owners, just put your information in the comments. Definitely. Um, come up here, drop your card off. Um, contact Yvette, myself, you know, just anything to reach out where we can start getting together the people who this can benefit. Yes. So. Yes, because even the stuff like we were talking about, putting a house in trust, um, doing these things, setting up your wills, setting up your, your all these things for your for your family if something happens to you. I had a conversation with someone the other day whose grandmother is, is in her 90s. The grandmother's not in the best of health. Her grandmother's house is left to her in her name, but she still has her home. So she's like, well, what would I do? If something happens to my grandmother. I wouldn't want to get rid of the house. I want to keep the house, but the house is, is not big enough for me. She wants a bigger, she likes her place. Her place is larger than her grandmother's house. So we were talking about that. It is like the, the possibility of what she would do as far as like moving into her grandmother's house and what she could do with her house, whether it's rent it out, sell it, whatever. Uh, all of these other things, there's all these, these different things because people, so many people are in different parts of their life, be it taking care of their elderly parents, uh, what's the legalities of that? Oh, the, the, and I, I just totally got off of it. So when her talking about her grandmother's house, then we were talking about the fact that because of her grandmother's age, she can't get life insurance for her grandmother. So, and I, t I was telling her, well, I know people who have prepaid their funerals ahead mm -hmm. of time, and she didn't know, know that that was a thing. Yeah. So I was telling her that's a thing. I know people who've done it, yeah. and therefore not saying we're pushing your grandmother toward the door, but if she doesn't have life insurance, we know that that part is covered already, and the, 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 mm -hmm. the, the, the uh, payments have been made, and therefore that's not something you got to stress about at that at that late hour. Yeah. So all these things are things to talk about um, that so many people, people don't know. Done that. They they did well, this one person they did it in a under weird circumstances. They weren't in the best mental health and they were contemplating suicide so they paid for all of their stuff on their wow. own. Because they said that they didn't want that to be a burden. They knew that them committing suicide would be bad enough so they paid for everything and ended up getting the mental help and all of that so but nonetheless it's already paid for. and when I heard that I said Ooh. that's deep so yeah that's a, in, I want to say she might, might have been 30 when she did it I think she's she's in her early 40s now. so it's been paid for a while through a weird turn of event possible turn of events it happens so but yeah that's def, def, oh, definitely 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 do those living wills and do that mm -hmm. you have no idea how many people come in and asking me about what's going on with their family members house and did this person actually change the will and that I get a lot of people that come in with readings for that. Asking me, well, what's going on? Well, we're in litigation and this, that, and the other. Get, make sure y'all get that get that paperwork done. I understand grandma telling you is one thing, okay. but legally on paper is something totally different. Like we get, cause we, we've always been an oral tradition type of people. So if grandma's sitting there at the family reunion union and she said, well, I'm going to leave this to my baby Yvette, that was in stone, so to speak. Right. Well, there's some people out here that, that, what, that what's on the paper? Right. So we got to start moving. We got to start moving better with our own personal business and our families and our legacies. It can no longer be just what somebody orally said. It, it has it got to be on paper. Because it's all litigious. We live in a litigious society, so everything is is, is that way anyway. Because mm -hmm. even with, with 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 my friend, she had one son when she passed, and you would think that it automatically. But no, she didn't leave him as she didn't put a beneficiary down like on her bank account. So that was held up. So the the, the money she had there, he got the money from her retirement without a problem. But it was all these different things and. He, 
she's never been married. This is her only kid. But it, and you would think it would be just that simple. It, it used to be a time where it was just that yeah. simple, though. And it wasn't. He had to go hire a whole lawyer and mm-hmm. do a, a whole probate attorney. So yeah, if she didn't want to, and I ain't mean to cut across you. Mm-hmm. Once you start dealing with probate, stay get some. Mm-hmm. Get y'all stuff straight, dog. Even if you don't have much, just do something to make sure your kids or your grandkids or your spouse is covered. If you ain't even in the space where you want to be married, make sure your significant other is on some legal documents. I wanted to go to this person. Right. That it, I mean, they can try to contest it, but guess what? If they are of a, a sound mind and all of that, it might be a little hard for other the other people to contest it if they say this is really what I want. Right. But it we gotta we gotta get past the oral thing because my grandmother did that and she said she always wanted my brother to have somewhere to live. And as soon as she died, they sold that house and whatever. Forget what she said. And it was no. It was no. I was there when it was said. It was a bunch of people that was there when it said, including the person who sold the house and the land. You know what I'm saying? And guess what? And nobody say nothing. It was orally, and everybody knew how she was about my brother. Everyone knew. But guess what? Wasn't on no paper. Yeah, didn't have a legal leg to stand so, on. Yep. So we got to get better with what handling on our business and our legacy and our, our our properties and stuff like that. A lot of our our family members they came up from the south and came up here and made a life made houses, built houses, bought houses, all of that type of stuff. And it just, nobody ever tries to keep that stuff in the family. Right. You know what I'm saying? So we got to, we have Not to legally. That. Nope. Anyways, yeah, that, that the legal part, instead of having to go through pro, probate to do anything. Because I'm telling you, y'all, I'm messing around with this probate stuff, they going to get theirs before you get yours. They're going to get a cut. The state of Michigan is going to get a cut of it. So, please. Where is the inheritance can. tax? There's all these goofy things because this government is anyway. Well, I'm not gonna go there. But um, <laughs> right. <laughs> it, it 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 there that there everything gets taxed and everything gets messed with. So it's best to have it all in writing because even you know with my grandmother, she passed in the middle of the month. So there was still some money left off of her social security toward the nursing home that she was in. So they cut me a check for $90 or they didn't cut me a check. They cut it for the estate of, and although I was her legal guardian, my father was technically her le- her next of kin. Mm. So my father had to cast a check, which was goofy to me. So, what the fuck is my purpose then? I don't understand. Yeah. So, yeah. So, how they do stuff. So, setting up your stuff, having all your stuff set up. No one likes to talk about death and the impending death and the things that come at the end of your life. But we all know that the end comes for everyone. So, having it set up so that everyone is, is covered would make so much more sense. And it's so much less heart wrenching on everyone. Yeah. When it go when it happens, um, I know that, that makes it so much easier. watching when my ex husband's mother passed. She had it all set up to where who got what as far as the money was concerned. She said who she wanted to have what as far as some, some of the materialistic stuff, but then her, her daughter did what she wanted to do. So that was a whole other thing. But nobody was giving a shit about the furs and the diamonds. It's like if it's that important to you, whatever. So she took the furs and the diamonds, and she still got her cut of the money. Although her his mother did not want her to have that cut of the money, but the person who was divvying up the money felt that that wasn't their place to say no. You can't have. So she got the furs, the diamonds, and the money. But wow. her part, her cut of the money, anyways. But my point is, is that this woman has set it up already, saying who got what, but the executor of everything didn't follow it to the T. That was the only thing he didn't do was that part about the furs and the diamonds. But it's a really no right. No it really you know, who really cares? But um mm. yeah, yeah. Having it all set up makes it a whole lot easier. And it makes it easier on on the family in the grieving process. Yes. You know, I I've told my dad, man, put the 
that stuff on a piece of paper so I can handle what it is because I'm not even going to be right. Flat out, I'm not. And I know it's only, he only has two two kids. Mm -hmm. So it's me and my brother. We get that part. But then you also have grandkids. At that time, we had the conversation, and now there's great grands. You know what I'm saying? So you have a lineage. So you need to figure out what goes where, this, that, and the other. Because I remember in the beginning, 10 years ago, it was just me, my brother, and my three kids. So he was like, everything split five ways. But shoot, you got a nugget and hit them pickle. Like, so other, you know what I'm saying? It's others. Do Mona now get a bigger share because she got kids? Like, so all of this stuff I want in your sound mind, write it out. Because I ain't trying to have to fist fight with nobody. Because that's the only way that that's, it's, it's going to happen that way. Like, so please write it out. Because I'm already be emotional and somebody going to say the wrong thing. That won't be where my cut of money go. Yeah, all of that type of stuff. Oh. Yeah, it makes it easier. <laughs> Much it, easier. It definitely makes it easier. So, yeah. So, so I would love to have those kind of workshops up here. Because yeah. um, it, it, we really need it. And the, the, the times right now are nuts. And these streets are insane. And if you're in the Detroit area, you definitely know these streets are insane. So I think everyone needs to have their all their financial and all their legal their legal documents in order. Um, yeah, at all ages, y'all. At all, really, at all ages, because you're never too young. I, that you're never ever ever too young. I'm on my son's head about this stuff all the time. You got five kids, boy. You need to get had this shit in order. But you know, mm -hmm. who listens to me? And it don't even matter of of what. And people think that. You got to have all of this money and all of this assets and all of these houses and all of this stuff in order to demand. Look, if you got uh, $5,000 and you got two kids, you need to be putting them two kids down to get 2500 or something. Seriously. I mean. It don't have to be a lot. Anything. Because people fight over the stupidest stuff. Uh. People fight over the stupidest stuff. Death, I, I've always said it. Death brings out the ugly in so many people. So, for real. Because people will come out the woodwork telling you what they're entitled to. And you will get beat the fuck up. <laughs> that's yeah. my, that's why I'm like, please put this up on some paper, Dad, because I'm telling you, my nephew from down in Alabama come up here and knock the fuck out. Like, it, I'm, I've already told people, like, we own that. We not about to play this stuff. My, both my parents work too hard for that. And both of my parents always was talking about their grandkids. So I think everybody pretty much ain't about to try me. But a lot of people get tried, though. You a lot of tried. people get to playing around and, oh, well, I talked to him last week. Yeah. But it, it, at, at, the, at the grieving time, people play on those emotions at that time in such a way. And I can say that as a person who lost their dad and I'm an only child. So he had nothing in writing, and his ex-wife just did what the fuck she wanted to do. I mean, his second wife, sorry. His second wife just did what she wanted to do. So all I asked for was his van, and she wouldn't even give me that. So, And I wasn't in the mood to fight, because there's no middle for me. It went there. There's no middle for but me. But I get it. <laughs> so You was being real I had to just let that go. I had to let it go and say, you know, that's been his wife for the last 20 some years. Fuck it, just let that go. I know my relationship with my dad. I gotta just ride with that. Because if I do anything else, I'm going to jail. You see why I want my daddy day? Well, I had nothing to do with that. My daddy ain't nothing like yours. So. <laughs> she beat that old lady up. It's, you know, and, and, and it's messed up. It, yeah. It's totally messed up. So, and even with her writing of the obituary and all of that shit, well, she didn't write it. She let the people from the VFW place write that motherfucker. And so it's wrong. It's not correct. She has it with her granddaughter calling him dad. And she wrote a poem. I'm an only child, but her granddaughter wrote some poem calling him dad and put this in there. It's just a whole bunch of fuckery. This is why I came back with like 20 damn obituaries for his people here in Detroit. And I didn't give them out to nobody. 
because they're wrong. They're not correct. This is a whole bunch of fuckery because she was so distraught. It is that when I talked to her and I was like, so how come you didn't have me help do anything? I didn't know what to do. No, it's nonsense. It's like, no, that's some bullshit. So the people put it together from his birth certificate and his military records and what to put in the obituary. Yep. So they have it listed as I'm his daughter, her daughter is his daughter, and all her grandkids and all this yeah, it's just it's 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 nuts. It's nuts. He would have never stood for that, it's nuts. Yep. Yep. That's horrible. Oh my God. I think the writing of our obituary is horrendous. I remember sitting there just looking at my computer screen. Thinking I have to put all of my mama's years in a couple paragraphs. I remember thinking I need to write mine out. Because I'm not going to put my kids through this. And it was a lot of stuff that I knew. I didn't call nobody. It was it was based off the stuff that I knew of my parent. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I let my dad read it. He was like, yeah, that was pretty consistent. Um, and that was it. And my mother, she was so adamant about her immediate family and her, like her, and her immediate family was her husband, her kids, and her grandkids. Mm-hmm. So the bulk of it was talking about that. You know what I'm saying? I put in her, her, you know, her parents who preceded her in death and her siblings. That was it. Like, it was pretty cut and dry. Mm-hmm. Anybody who knew, they knew it was about Mona Joshua Faith. That was it. So, they actually, I talked a lot more about her, her being her favorite title, which is grandparent. Mm-hmm. And, you know, all of that type of stuff. But, yeah, yeah, that was, oof, my God. And just to have let somebody else do nah. Yep. I did my grandmother's. In fact, the day that she passed, I came home that night and started working on it. Yeah. So I want to say it was the next morning. And I didn't roll enough of them out of Nisi's family. I wrote Nisi's. Yeah, that was probably hot. You and Dale from most of them. I wrote Nisi's. I wrote her mamas. I wrote her sisters. Wow. I helped write her aunts and her uncles. Um, yeah. I'm an officiary, obituary writer. Don't put that out officiary, there. Officiary, officiary, officiary. But this is stuff. That, I mean, writing all this stuff out ahead of time helps. These are little thing, little things that you can do to help your family not be so distraught at a fucked up time. Yeah. And that goes back with the things that you need to have with your will. Yeah. Okay. Here's an outline. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like those are things that are needed. You know what I'm saying? When it when you kind of get to that that space. Hey, here this is what I want to put in my will. Here goes some bullet points. Cause my kids, there's things about me that my kids don't. Well, my kids know because I tell my kids everything. But in those moments, they brain ain't about to go to that. Yeah, you don't really think of everything. They not gonna remember what school I went to. If my if my dad is there, he'll be able to tell them. But you know what I'm saying? That's you got to talk to this person. Well, what about now? I've seen that a lot. Calling people. What about this? What about? Oh, man, I ain't never calling nobody. Yeah, but I mean, I've seen people do that. Yeah. Oh, so um, what year did she marry? Nah, listen, all of that. Well, you know, nah, listen. So yeah, I mean, y'all gonna get some bullet points. I don't know. I might make a video. I might make a video. Obituary. Be like, hey y'all. That's creepy. No. But y'all don't. That's creepy. Let me tell you about me. That's creepy. No. Y'all would like it. No. I mean, you're some tequila and shit. Oh, baby. What do you mean? I be cracking jokes and shit. Then I send y'all copies a week later. <laughs> oh. With y'all own personal message. Girl, look. Listen, stop crying. Hit that book out. No, you tripping. Oh. Creepy. So, so now something happened a week later. You could be looking like, 
<laughs> in the <Yeah>. mail. <laughs> Seriously, no. Creepy. Oh. Anyways, I'm gonna turn around and be like, if you're looking at this oh. video, <laughs> <laughs> that means I'm not. <laughs> She making fun of me on the low. Somebody gave me a Dear John tape like that once. <laughs> we went on a cruise together, and he he took a video of the cruise. And at the end of the vi- of the tape, it's him sitting in his in his lounge chair in his bedroom. He has the back of the chair, and he turns around. Hello, Yvette. If you're seeing this, oh, <sighs> oh, <sighs> that's. She hit me. That hurt. I just realized. <laughs> <sighs> I can see you not screaming. Ah, Justin. Hey, you just see this shit. Y'all listen. There's something y'all don't know about Motown Witch After Dark. We talk about some morbid ass shit. We talk about some fucked up shit. We do. <laughs> Poor poo. Like at the end of the conversation, we be like. Ooh. So yeah. Yeah. Conversations turn dark. As you see, it turns into a whole right. But that's not that's, that's dark, not dark yet responsible. Yeah. It's depending not. on how you want to look at it. Because I mean that is a part of life. So yeah. and that that is that is that one part that has to be handled and it's always neglected. Yeah. And I know it's easy. I when my grandmother when my one granny passed, she was in a pet in the middle of moving. So all her stuff was when she had a stroke, she was already everything was packed. So her apartment was being moved. But she had already laid it out what she wanted to wear, what she wanted, what color she wanted us to wear, and, and all of these things were already laid easy. out. So it was so much easier than trying to figure out a whole bunch of nonsense. And my mom had specific. She had specific colors. My mom had specific people she wanted to wear, and it was very, very small, very. Like she didn't want her siblings there. She didn't want none of her friends there. For real, for real. She she always just she could name the people that she wanted there, and that's exactly what I did. We allowed one more additional person to come, but that was it. That was it. And I tossed I, when I say I tossed around that idea until the morning of the funeral. That was my ex-husband's mom. Cause she was the only person outside of my mom's kids, her grandkids, and her husband. That's who she wanted. And when I said, when I say the morning of, his mama found out at 9 a.m. she could come to the front. And everybody was like, well, can she come? Well, can she come? Well, can she come? And I waited. My dad was like, man, ass in. And I waited, waited, waited. 9 a.m. that morning, she threw her clothes on the cat. It had to sit right in my soul. That woman, she bothered me enough. She wasn't about to bother me. Was she there for? No. So she was. She was very specific, and I went by what she said. She said she ain't want her, her siblings there, and and they was what are you gonna do with what the fuck? Do you know your sister? Yeah. Do just what she said. And see, and that's a huge thing. Even even in honoring the family when they make that kind of decision. One of my friends, her husband passed, and that's what she asked for. One, she asked for space. Two, she asked that it because her husband and her were not in the best of terms. He was abusive to her for years, mm-hmm. and he ended up being disabled, and she still took care of him and all that all that stuff. She's old, much older than me. Um, but when she passed, when he passed, she just wanted the immediate. She wanted his. It was for his children. Hmm. This whole service was for his children and his grandchildren, for them to say goodbye to him. That was what she said. So she didn't want all of us friends, none of us to show up. She asked for space. So I sent her a message telling her I honor her space, and that when she was ready to talk, I'm here. Mm-hmm. And, and later, what? when she came up here to the store. She hugged the shit out of me and said, thank you. Because you probably was the only person who actually did what she said. You gotta, everybody grieves differently. And you and gotta it. give people that, 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 what they ask for. You have to honor that because your way may not be their way. Exactly. And your way is not the way, not the right way. This is how they do it. They want to sit in the middle of the bed and eat a peanut butter sandwich. That's their business. 
Yep. That's how they grieve. Leave them alone. Mm-hmm. Um, I know people who, oh my God, I would be terrible. I don't even understand how they talking or answering the phone. Some people, that's what they got to do. Like some people want to stay busy. Some people want space. Some people want to just cry and grieve. Some people want people around them. Other people don't want nobody. Like you got to talk to that. And it's and none of them is the wrong way. Right. It's just everybody has their own way of grieving. My way of grieving is making sure everybody was good. And I want to say about two years later, it, it was my time. Mm. That's when I was sitting at work and my eyes would not fucking stop. And I'm talking just as normal. It was not a sniff or cry. I had no idea what the hell was going on. I'm like, my eyes are broken. I could not <laughs> stop. And they, it would not stop. They released the, the release finally came. Yep. And I sat there, sat there, and I'm at work, and my whole shirt is wet. Like, it was just like somebody turned on the faucet, and it was just pouring, pouring, pouring. And I'm like, what the hell? And it just hit me like, it's your time to grieve. Out the blue, I wasn't even thinking about it. Wow. But my body was like, all right, everybody good now. And, and I probably it was every bit of two years, I was making sure my dad was good, and my brother was good, and my kids was good. And if they were good, I was good. But at the end of the day, duh, that's your mama too. Right. So there's no no right or wrong way to do it. But whatever that person say, and, and sometimes guess what? People be wanting to know, well, what do I say? Ask them what do you need from me? And actually listen. Exactly. If they say, look, I don't need nothing. Just give me some time. Okay. Text me or call me when you're ready. And that's it. And it could be tearing you up, but that's what they ask. Yeah. And that is the whole thing. You if they say, "Look, space. I need you. I need you to come over here. I need you. I want. Can you spend the night? Can you be away from the house? If you can do it, then do it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But let that person judge. All that. Oh my God. I'll be there if, if you need me. And I always tell people, guess what? People say that shit. But once that funeral is over with, that's when you need them. You don't need them through all of that. Everybody there through that. Man. But who gonna be there at two o'clock in the morning when you wake up and that and your spouse of forty five years ain't there? That's when you need somebody. Yeah. So, you know, all that. Ooh, I'll be. I, I'm there for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but like, yeah, that that sounds good. But can that person really pick up the phone at two o'clock in the morning and answer? And you answer that thing without an attitude. Yeah, I'm definitely an advocate of everybody handling things differently. But y'all already know I'm a loner. I like to just just leave me the fuck alone. Just leave me alone. I won't, I won't be around. People don't talk to me. Just leave me alone. Mm-hmm. I had a couple people call me. You okay? I'm good. I'll talk to you later. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can't do nothing but respect that. Cause trust me, I am scrubbing probably the tiniest corner of the house of the face board or something right now. Just thing be. That's how I process. That's right. Be. So yeah. with whatever kind of music is that's on, but there's no right or wrong. It's everybody has their way. Mm-hmm. Whenever something happened in East Indian family, they wanted people over there. So I was over there every day. Anytime something happened, I had to be over there every freaking day because that's how they process. Right. Everybody being around. Yeah. So different people handle handle things differently. She was mad at me when my grandmother passed. I didn't tell nobody. I didn't. I didn't call nobody. You know her? Mm. Oh yeah, I can see her being mad. I ain't call nobody. So just, just leave me alone. Like so someone's like, yeah. yeah. I just think that's the one thing that people need to ask is, what do you need from me right now? And then do it. Pretty much. Because, and, and, and the crazy part is, some people don't want everybody around them. That part. They may want this, these couple, them. I, 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 can, I can deal with y'all. Because I know y'all know me, and if I fall out on the floor, y'all ain't going to look at me crazy. You don't want everybody. Right. Because everybody can't handle you in that space. So, yeah. Like, if I, I think if I broke, I would have to have, like, a handful. I, got, I had to have two or three people. Because y'all would be like, first of all, we knew this was going to happen. And two, we just got to let her do that. Yep. Everybody, I wouldn't want everybody to see me in that vulnerable spot. So them, them couple, two, three, all right, y'all, let me do what I do. 
Here we go. I might have to just sit there and watch me flop around on the floor like a fish. But guess what? I know y'all ain't gonna let me hurt myself. And we got the wet rag. We ready to swap your head down. We yep. Right. Let me do what I do. But yeah, this is. I, I think I'm a. I'm a big advocate of asking people what you need from me. That's usually what when my my text my question. I am so sorry. What do you need? Nothing. I'm good. Just you know, I'll let you know. Okay. Just let me know. And if I don't ever hear anything else back, I put it out there. What did you need from me? You said nothing, then that's it. So, mm -hmm. all right, y'all. We done kept y'all in a weird uh, conversation for a long time. For real, for real. I don't even know what's how how long we've been on here. An hour and twenty two minutes. That's not bad. Well, no, because we laugh for the first three. <laughs> yeah, our boober reels are hilarious. Anyways, y'all, we gonna get ready to go to the next one. The next time, and hopefully, when we come back, and when when Angie and I come back, there'll be a, 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 a announcement of, of the next upcoming classes and what we're yeah. gonna what, what we're gonna be doing. Yeah. So, in the meantime, continuing to manifest, continuing continue to manifest, continue to not try and just do. Yeah. Watch your 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 um, vocabulary about your manifestations and start getting. Uh, some of your business work, paperwork, in in order for your legacy. Yep, that's the gist. Most definitely, make it happen, Captain. Okay, Katie. Alrighty. Bye. If you like our content, like and subscribe, and click on the bell for notifications. If you're in the Detroit area, stop by and see us. We're open seven days a week, or visit us at our website www.motownwitch.com. Thanks.